following program is brought to you by your friends at Podcast One. There are so many ways to save at your friendly neighborhood Safeway. And now, save even more with over 7,000 lower prices on the things you buy most. Save today on Chiquita Bananas. They're just 49 cents a pound. Selected varieties of 32-ounce Lucerne Chunk or Shredded Cheese are $6.99. And use your club card to get a value pack of Signature Farms Chicken Drumsticks, Thighs, or Leg Quarters. They're only $1.29 a pound. Safeway. Come in and explore. Welcome to R.J. Bell's Dream Preview, weekly winners from his Wise Guy Roundtable, broadcasting from the pregame.com studios in Las Vegas. Here is R.J. Bell. College football week five edition with the Wise Guy Roundtable. To my left, Ken Thompson. To my right, Brad Powers, both college football experts, specialists assassins against the spread. I'm RJ Bell. What a show. Pretty good week of games, but man, the insight, the insight from the boys. We're going to do Brad versus the world. It's his power ratings, and they go against both Ken's opinion and the Associated Press, the popularity poll. We're also going to have some big storylines. We're going to have some faulty finals from last week that affect this week's handicap. We've got a trap game to avoid. We also have the trend game of the week. Pros versus Joes. Big line moves. Smart money. Ooh, smart money. Two double likes. That means both Ken and Brad like it. Not lean like. Plus, best bet. Best bet from each of them. And a bonus at the very end, Friday night, we've got the crossfire in the USC Washington State. Usually we don't do Friday games. It's too big to miss at the very end of the podcast. Let's get straight to it. Brad versus the world versus the AP. It's on Florida State is the disagreement. Yeah, Florida State not currently ranked in the AP top 25, mainly because they're 0-2, haven't won a game yet. However, I still have them number 16 in my power ratings. And that maybe you might ask, well, they're 0-2, Brad. You haven't downgraded them far enough. Well, in fact, I have. Where did they start the season? They started the season at number three. And in fact, I've actually downgraded them 11 points in just two games. They lost their starting quarterback. That was seven of it. But they have actually downgraded them 11 points more. That's more than any other team in the country since the start of the season. But I still think they're getting undervalued because it's a team that was up against it against Alabama in the opener. Lost 24-7. Very close game the first three quarters. And then last week, we talked about it on this podcast. They were in a very bad spot against NC State. Not really surprised they lost the game outright. What was the line on that game? Line was 10. I had a premium picked on NC State. I came away, you know, obviously when you cover a spread by 17 points, yeah, i thankful NC State was clearly the right side, but Florida State moved the ball. The true freshman quarterback actually played better than what I expected, so I didn't downgrade Florida State that much. All right, so to me, this is a great example of how wins and losses are so dominant in the mind of the mainstream media in the minds of the talking heads in the mainstream. But really, the great example is 42-yard field goal. You make it, you miss it, you win or you lose. Does it really tell you anything about how good these teams are? I think the best way to go about it generally is in close games, give each team a half win and give a full win or a full loss in games that aren't close. You're going to have a much better record that is usually going to be more in line with the spread, but less in line with popularity polls. Ken, do you agree that Florida State's a top 25 team? I do. I think they're right there on around 24, 25, only because they are 0 2. But when you go toe to toe with Alabama in the first week, and they did, and they were right there in that game till Francois got hurt. I mean, they struggled a little bit moving the ball. They couldn't run the ball on Bama, but who can? Uh, but they still are definitely a top 10 team with Francois at quarterback. So, you know, Blackman coming in, a lot of unknown there. Uh, NC State really played well defensively. I was surprised they played that well, but they slowed down the running game. And then Blackman got going as the game got going as well. He was 23-38 for 275 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Patrick and Akers, 
they did okay from the backfield, but they're no Dalvin Cook. That's for sure. The team has definitely taken a step back, Brad. Okay, the game itself this week, Florida State favored by seven and a half at Wake Forest. Brad, lean or like? I like Florida State, and here's why. I like that they're 0-2 in desperation mode. They're off playing. And, and you like because the market is going to price them cheap at 0-2. Yeah, absolutely. They're pricing them cheap at 0-2. And uh, obviously, they're taking a, a complete step down in class. Even though they're playing a 4-0 Wake Forest team, that's still a major step down from Alabama and NC State, who I thought is a legitimate top 25 team. Flip side, Wake Forest 4-0. Haven't played a single team in the top 50 of my power ratings, so they're taking a large step up in class. And even though you have an 0-2 team taking on a 4-0 team, I mean, I think there's a, still a complete disparity as far as the power rating here. Florida State favored by 7.5. I think a motivated Florida State team and it should be. And you know they're going to be motivated. At 0-2, absolutely, and angry. And plus, improvement in the second game for the freshman quarterback. That's why I like the Knowles. Well, here you go. I mean, John Wolford is a pretty solid quarterback, and there's a good running game for Wake Forest. It's not just one back. It's three backs. Uh, Bird, Colburn, and Carney are all pretty solid. So you're going to shorten the game there. Now, they did play BC and beat them 34-10. to A little deceiving on the score, but it's the same Boston College team that just went to Death Valley and was 7-7 with Clemson going to the fourth quarter. So I give you know Wake Forest a little more credit there. Also, Clawson, the coach, very solid job. This guy's got these guys believing, and he's got them believing better that they're better than – they possibly could be the opening game Presbyterian. I throw that out, but the game against Appalachian state, they win that game on the road. They win it by a point. Look, that's not an easy place to play. That's a good solid team out of the Sunbelt, probably the winner of the Sunbelt conference. So again, they're doing things that Wake Forest in the past has not done. Yes. The four and O record is a little deceiving there because of the competition, but the competition is good enough to give them the confidence they need to go home. You're going to catch seven and a hook and you're going to be able to hang in with a Florida state team that is not, cashed in on a turnover in their first two games. And that's key. I think if Wake Forest can win that turnover battle in this game, that they're going to be right there. It's going to be a one score game. So you lean Wake Forest. Yes, I do lean only. Okay. So it's the never ending debate are turnovers skill or are they luck? I think they're more luck. That's the fact Florida state hasn't benefited from a turnover makes me think, Oh, that's one of the reasons they're underrated, but that's the debate, right? Because there is some skill to it. I also find fascinating about this game. Each team seems to have a reason to be motivated. When a team does better than expected, they want to keep it going. When a team is a loss away from a true embarrassment, because 0-3 with a loss away force would be, then they're motivated. So I think motivation is there. We've got a like from Brad on Florida State, a lean on Wake Forest from Ken Thompson. Now, Brad versus the world part two. Usually it's going to be one of the games we cover, but there's been so much talk about LSU and Brad put out his power ratings up every Tuesday at pregame.com. Ton of popularity there. I think they're the best Vegas rankings made public for sure is Brad. You've got LSU where number 20 in the country. Ken, Overrated, underrated. I thought they were overrated. I didn't see how they could be ranked ahead of Mississippi State after losing by 30 to that team. And then yeah, struggling with a Syracuse team in Death Valley off that game. And their only win is, you know, their win before that is against Tennessee Chattanooga in a game they got out of the gate slowly. I just don't see this team having much innovation. I mean, there's no creativity on offense. And, yeah, they have some good big bodies on defense. But to me, this team just doesn't seem like from either side of the ball that they're dominating. Yeah, let, let me attack the, you know, how can they be, you know, power rated ahead of a team that they lost by 32? Let, let's put that in perspective, because this is a question I get from a lot of people. Hey, didn't, didn't this team just beat this team? How could you have them still ranked ahead? A lot of times it goes in the spread. Now, LSU was a seven and a half point. It goes in the spread. It, it, what does that mean? Well, you got to consider the spread. So, for example, LSU on the road two weeks ago was a seven and a half point favorite on the road at Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. Yes, they lost by 30. I made the adjustment. Current power ratings would say LSU would only be a one-point favorite on a neutral against Mississippi State. So clearly, I made a power ratings adjustment. And Because if you're seven on the road, it means you were 10 points better at that point. 10 points better. So I've clearly made it. What you don't want to do when you're doing a power rating, it, you can't be adjusting your power rating by no, seven it, to 10 points and, every single week. 
and and I think well, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, college you see bigger adjustments than pros. I mean, once you get early to week on, six early or on, early on, yeah, right, yeah. first four weeks. Once you get to week six or seven of NFL, you rarely see more than a point and a half unless there's an injury. And I mean, that's extreme—a point and a half. This is a great conversation because, to me, Ken, the thing that makes me not as worried about oh, they just beat them bad. Like, think about the NBA seven game series, right? Teams up two zero. Uh, home team ends up winning by 30 and then uh, or let's say it's game four. Now the, the, the home field or home court flips and the other team's favored by nine, let's say, is I think that's what's so weird about football because you only play so few games. Every game seems so important. I was on with Fred Fowler, who's ESPN Houston. I've done him for years. You've actually started, Brad, this year with them on Thursdays yep. doing a college hit. And great guys, but I do a SB Nation, which used to be the Yahoo Network, Ken, that you were on for a long time. You know, one of the first, if not first, Vegas shows in a long time nationally, and that was a quite an accomplishment. We do a Tuesday night show that we pre-record, and we were talking about how many NFL games would it take for me to feel like I really know a team. And I said, I'm not trying to joke with you, 32. Like more than a season. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what, you know, Fred's like, really? And I go, well, how much more telling is a football game than a baseball game? Right? Maybe double, but at most double? Well, 32 games into a baseball season, do you feel like you have a great feel for every team? Maybe some of them. There's a lot of, if you look at those standings after 32 yep. games, I think in the NFL, there's just this, I think there's every year, there's teams that are seven and nine that are better than 10 and six teams. Every year, it's just a couple of bounces one way or the other. Now, when there's total domination in a game, you got to start wondering. But the funny thing about football, it can be 21-7, and the team with 21 is driving. They score a touchdown. They end up winning by 40. But if they throw a pick six, it ends up be, it's that one play can dictate a whole game. Yes. So I'm not saying that happened in this game. I'm just saying this is a fascinating discussion about how a team can dominate a game and still the other team be a better team. But again, a nine point adjustment seems like you really adjust it. Yeah, over uh, the that. last two weeks. It was a couple of weeks ago. And then obviously LSU had another poor performance after that against Syracuse. So to close LSU, do you feel like maybe you've got them a little high? I do have them probably a little oh, high. Oh, can you convince? Yeah. We love it when there's a convincing. So you would make a, what, a half point? Probably point? a half point to a point even because, you know, injury report, and this just happened today on Tuesday, their All American running back, a top two or three running back in the country. Is not going to be playing for this week. And when I put on my power ratings, that's for that particular week's game, upcoming games. That was something maybe a little bit of an oversight on my part, and I'll agree. They are probably a half point to a point too high. And that SB Nation show is 9 o'clock Eastern Tuesday nights, and uh, it replays on Thursday in the evening. I'm not exactly sure when. Archie, I will say this with Brad's power ratings, that they are – very impressive because I had to go down to number 20 to find one that I thought could be just slightly out of whack. And, you know, so kudos to you. And I'm starting to get it. You've been doing this since week one. And I always said myself that it's kind of tough outside. And I know we have to come up with point spreads, but to have those power ratings early, because there are going to be a lot of adjustments because there are going to be teams that are better than we thought teams that are not as good, but you did a real nice job week four. I, I think they're as, as good as I've seen. That's Ken Thompson talking about Brad Powers. I'm R.J. Bell. No compliments for R.J. yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you you guys are just uncomfortable and, you know, you're too manly for that kind of stuff. All right. We've got our next category of games, faulty finals. This is a game where if you look at last week's scoreboard, it is deceiving. And it is a driver of the handicap in that game. Brad, South Carolina, Texas A&M, you think this is a faulty final of one of these teams? Faulty final? I think it's a faulty team that's had three out of their four games being faulty finals this year. South Carolina. Which is? S South Carolina getting outgained by 200 yards in the opener, but found a way somehow, some way to beat NC State. Outgained against a terrible Missouri team after past reflection, what we've seen the last three games. Still won the game. And then last week against Louisiana Tech a team that they're almost a double-digit home favorite against. They are trailing, entering the fourth quarter 13 to nothing 
somehow come up with a miracle drive to get a field goal on the final play of the game. They had to drive like 70 yards for that field goal with no timeouts left. This is a very faulty, overrated South Carolina team. Do you agree with that, Ken? I think there's uh, definitely some overrated uh, stuff going on there with this Gamecocks team. There's definitely, you know, I I agree with you a little bit. But uh, when I look at this particular game, I think they have a good chance to hang in there with Texas A&M because I think that's a team, RJ as well, that uh, is is a little bit overrated. You know, they've had quarterback All right, so let's make the case. So, um, because if one team is overrated by, let's just say, three points, the other team's overrated by four points, well, you want to start your handicap looking towards that overrated three-point team. So give us your breakdown, uh, leaner-like, on South Carolina and m Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lean towards South Carolina because this is a team under Muschamp that's finding ways to win. And Brad's right. You know, they did get out gain uh, badly by North, uh, North Carolina State in the opener. But the game against Missouri, they had that game in hand. Missouri put up a lot of garbage yards at the end at home to make it look good. Now pass them. Uh, by 50 yards, but that was a game that South Carolina was in control by double digits uh, pretty much throughout the second half. Uh, Bentley's a winner. The quarterback's a winner. He's a young kid. Uh, He's thrown for over 1,000 yards already, seven touchdowns, four picks, pretty good. They did lose Debo Samuel, which is a huge loss to them. It's one of their better uh, receivers and a guy that's a game-breaker with game-breaking speed, so that hurts them. Uh, But they're good enough to hang with A&M. College Station is not the same home field advantage that it's been because this team under Sumlin has been disappointing for the last several years. So the fan base is right now, they're torn. Do we want this guy out of here, or can we salvage the season and maybe get a crack to knock off Alabama here in College Station? They're not good enough to beat Alabama, and this team to me is somewhere around 7-5 and five when it's all said and done, and I think someone will be done, you know, be gone. They have a pretty good backfield with Travion Williams and Keith Ford, the transfer from Oklahoma, but uh, you know, there's just no game-breakers for this team, and I think this is a one-score game, so I like them to cover this game. Okay, so A and M. One second, Brad. Favored by nine. We didn't get to that at home against South Carolina. So Ken Thompson lean South Carolina. Brad, I lean Texas A and M. Obviously, it starts with me saying and thinking South Carolina is overrated. But let me make the pro case for Texas A and M. I think this is a team that's going to be starting to play with some confidence. Obviously, all the talk about Kevin Sumlin on the hot seat. Yes, he's still on the hot seat. But the reality is, they have won three straight games. Just beat Arkansas for the sixth straight year overtime win. And most importantly to me. I think they finally found a, a quarterback. Kellen Mond, the true freshman, had over 200 yards passing, over 100 yards rushing. I think as he continues to grow, the offense gets better and better. So I think a Texas A&M team ascending, a South Carolina team overrated, that's why I lean with the Aggies. Brad Powers with the lean. Okay, next game. This is the second of two faulty finals. We're going to Ken on this one. We've got California, Oregon, and you see a faulty final here. Well, uh, uh, as far as uh, Cal losing to USC by 10, uh, that, that was a one-score game. I mean, it, to, to me, USC, I, I've followed this team forever. I know this team inside out, and I think they're a team that's overrated. I mean, it's just quite simply uh, Sam Darnold has, has kept them in games so and let's, won let's, games let's, that they shouldn't have won. Let's talk about Cal versus USC. Okay. So game ended 10? Game ended 10, 30 and to 20. you're saying it should have been, you know, less than, less than a touchdown. It, it could have. You're talking six turnovers USC well, got. So, okay, six turnovers, and uh, and what was it, two for Cal? Yep, plus so four So it's plus four for USC. Okay, um, now you're supposed to cover that game. You're supposed to. You're supposed to take advantage of it. I mean, USC, Ronald Jones didn't travel with the team. When they have the two running backs, Jones and Carr, and they're at full strength, then they're a legit team, a team that can – go up and down the field and take pressure off Darnold. Uh, also, uh, Burnett was banged up as well, the one of their leading receivers. So, you know, Darnold's a, a Superman-type quarterback. He can do things. Uh, he and Josh Rosen are similar in that way, that they can do things on their own and improvise and make plays. But you have to have some of your weapons there. And I'll tell you right now, Cal's playing with a lot of confidence. Wilcox has stepped in there, and people thought it was going to take three, four years for this guy to fix things because they were going away from Sonny Dyke's high-flying offense and going into what people thought was going to be a very conservative offense and rely on the defense just to hang around in games and look good. They have done more than that, and they had an outside chance to beat USC had they taken care of the football. And so, yeah, it was definitely a faulty final as far as I'm concerned, and I think this Cal team is playing with a lot of confidence, and I really think the the fan base up there in the Berkeley area is fired up right now that they have Wilcox as their coach. Okay, so we've got in the game this week, Cal is a 13.5-point underdog at Oregon. Oregon favored by 13.5 at home. Um, 
Let's get to your like or lean first, Ken, because you pretty much gave your game handicap. Like or lean? Well, right right now, I what what I played on this is the over. I right, so the, you like I the like over. the over. Yeah. And remember, guys, we let the boys have one over under and one pass if they want it, and that lets us get a like or lean on most of the sides. But then you get a nice juicy total that you know they like best of all the totals on the amongst these big marquee game yeah and it's gone up a point rj from 67 and a half to 68 and a half but i played it early uh it's a game that i feel cal's going to be able to move on oregon's defense oregon's defense not really strong they had a lot of trouble down in tempe against arizona state lose the game outright and it's a cal team that like i said has confidence but their defense will give up yardage as well and i think somebody like oregon at home under pressure with the running game of royce freeman and then uh, a pretty solid uh, passing game as well. I think that uh, both teams are going to go up and down the field. So Ken Thompson like over Cal Oregon over 68 and a half as of Tuesday here in Las Vegas. Brad Powers, lean or like? I lean with California mainly because of the misleading final against USC, a game they very well could have won outright. But here's why it's only a lean for me. And here's my worry about having a California ticket is the fact that Oregon is off an outright upset loss as a 17 point favorite last week. Going back home, the lines come down several points where, boy, if I was wanting to bet Cal now, I, when I could have gotten him above two touchdowns, that doesn't make me very sharp. So I that mean, would be the I concern mean, I have. You think about it, this is the most extreme case possible. You got a Cal team, it looks like they could have beaten USC. Yep. You got an Oregon team, very disappointing loss. If you're just scoreboard watching, you're thinking Cal for sure. And as you said, line went from Oregon 15 to 13 and a half. Through the key number of 14. And that's the big reason why Californians went from a like to a lean because of going through a key number of 14. Next up, we've got our storyline games. These are the games that one storyline dominate and affect the handicap. We got Georgia, Tennessee in this game, Georgia on the road, favored by seven, seven and a half in some spots. Ken, Tennessee's coach. His job may be at stake in this game. How does it affect the handicap? No, it's not. It may be. It is on the line. And I think if he loses this game by more than a touchdown, I think he's definitely gone by Sunday. In fact, if he loses this game, he may be gone either way. And so I think there's a lot of pressure on Butch Jones. This was a guy that had everything going his way last year. Tennessee was expected to win the East by most experts last year. They floundered down the stretch, and now they've gotten off to a a rough go early on. And then the game last week, I mean, they almost lost to a UMass team, an independent team that, quite frankly, doesn't belong on the same field with Tennessee nine times out of ten. But last week they nearly pulled it off, lost by six points. Butch Jones' job is definitely on the hot seat, Brad. I totally agree with that. And last week, I expected a flat performance, but they're a four-touchdown favorite, and when you're nip and tuck fourth quarter, not a good look. And I'll say this, I guess moving forward, how does it affect the handicap? Well, in the past, his team has rallied around him. His back has been against the wall the last couple of seasons. He needed to beat Florida last year. They had lost 11 straight to Florida. He got the win. They had a couple of disappointing losses at the end of the season last year, including one to Vanderbilt. Well, he needed to win the bowl game. He got it done. So past history says that Butch Jones, when his back is against the wall, Tennessee tends to rally around. But I got to be honest, RJ, this kind of feels a little bit different. He attacked the media on Monday, really called him out. Any type of of like what Ken says, if they're losing by a touchdown or more, I, I do think he's gone. Okay, so add all the factors together, Ken, with the Georgia favored by seven, seven and a half on the road, lean or like? I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm playing Tennessee. I'm I'm playing Tennessee. So that means you like him enough yes. to take off the rubber band. I am. I'm going for it. I mean, again, uh, I'm, I'm, he's a fighter. Butch Jones is a fighter. He's not a guy that I'm always going to be in his corner, but he'll come out fighting and his players, like Brad say, they will play tooth and nail. Now, are they good enough? We saw Quentin Dormady a couple times in spots come out fire that football. When he just rears back and fires that football, this guy can put it on the money. He's got a good, solid arm. And John Kelly's a game breaker. He's a good, solid running back. Everybody's got to step up. Brandon Johnson, good receiver. The defense has to come. They've got to force turnovers. And they get Georgia off a convincing, dominating win at home. So Georgia, just like Mississippi State, coming off that big win at home against LSU, going to Georgia, they got ambushed on the road. Good big conferences like the SEC, home field is huge. Momentum is huge, and Tennessee needs to get off to a good start, get that crowd in the game. They do that. They win this game outright. Yeah, and I lean with Tennessee as well. It's been a really tight series. Last five meetings all decided by a touchdown or less. 
So past history says close series. Past history says his players tend to rally around him. And the fact that Georgia, like Ken said, is off such a big-time performance. I lean with Tennessee, although the reason it's not I like R.J., don't like the rushing attack of Georgia up against a Tennessee rush defense that is one of the worst in the country. Okay, so like Tennessee can lean Brad with the caveat on rushing. Next game, second of two storyline games, Brad Penn State. This is a team that there was so much talk about their ATS streak. Not so good lately, but still, if you look back over the last 13 or so games, best streak in the country. So my question is, Penn State at home, favored by 17 over Indiana. How do you consider how hot Penn State's been overall and how they haven't been so hot lately? How does that streak affect your handicap? Well, you were paying a premium a few games ago on Penn State games because they failed to cover against Pittsburgh, because they almost lost outright to Iowa last week. I don't think you're paying that premium anymore. People remember, you know, we're an instant gratification society. So everyone remembers what you've done for me lately. Well, they haven't cashed your tickets lately, but I like to think that there is some value because yeah, they almost lost outright to Iowa last week. But if you followed that game, Penn state should have won by two, three touchdowns. They out first down them 29 to 11 out gained Iowa by 300 yards. And yet they need a touchdown on the final play of the game to win. I think there's some value because of it, and I don't think you're paying that huge premium as far as the point spread. So what you're saying is this is a team that's covered a bunch of games out of their last 13 or so, but because they've lost two or three ATS, premium's not there, that's potential value. Yep, that's exactly. So, Ken, same question. How do you consider Penn State streak? Uh, well, it's a little bit fraudulent in some of these games. I mean, it, you know, so when you go back to last year, again, I and RJ, you know, being an Ohio State guy, I said that that game not only saved their season, but it saved James Franklin's job. And they parlayed that into winning their last nine games before losing the Rose Bowl to USC. So, but still uh, covering. Yeah. And and, and you know what? And, and, and and God bless them. They, they, they played, (laughs) they played, they played well enough, but they're, uh, they're a team last week. I had them against Iowa and I was darn ticked off. And when I see a team that I know is that much better than another team and they continually screw up time and time again. I mean, you would figure you're going to fix this. And I think that they're relying on, you know what? It's okay. We've got it. We've got it. You keep playing like that. It's going to come back and bite you and you're going to lose a big game. And like Brad said, could have happened last week in a game when they were on the road at Kinnick stadium and out gain Iowa by 300 yards. Okay, Brad. So lean or like considering all factors with Penn state favored by 17 over Indiana. Yeah. Lean with them because of a misleading final on Penn state, Iowa. And also, you know, deep diving box scores, Indiana crushed Georgia Southern 52, 17. They had three non offensive touchdowns in that game. So that was a little bit misleading. And again, we're not paying the point spread premium. Like we were three weeks ago with Penn state lean on the Nittany lions. Okay, here's why I lean towards Indiana, because they have a quarterback controversy going right now, which is kind of good because you got two different guys. You have Legow and you have Ramsey. Ramsey's more of a runner. Legow's the passer. One guy struggles. The other guy can come in. Ellison comes off rushing for over 180 yards against Georgia Southern. Yes, not a great team, but still, they have two dynamic receivers, too. Simi Cobb's one of the most dynamic receivers in the country. You saw what he did against your Buckeyes, RJ, and uh, Tom is pretty good as well. So I think Indiana... They may not win this game in Happy Valley. I don't expect them to win this game. But you're going to give this team 17 points, a team that can move the ball, and they'll move it with confidence because they already went against the Ohio State defense, so they know they can move against the top-tier defense. I think they hang in this game. I think they lose somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 points. Okay, so disagreement between Ken and Brad. Speaking of that, now that was lean, lean. We've got a like-like disagreement coming up. Our very last game, our bonus Friday game at the end of the pod, Crossfire as it's called. Okay, next up, we're going to start having some fun. There's usually one or two games a week that don't fit cleanly into buckets. And these buckets are great. We've gotten wonderful feedback on it because it helps people understand, okay, this is a pros versus Joes, or this is a smart money game. And it helps you get, get elite, you know, get, understand the handicaps of, of the experts better. Sometimes, though, it doesn't fit into a bucket. So this is going to be called my overreaction trap bucket. It's just one team, one game, but there's a potential overreaction here that Brad thinks and Ken thinks, I think, that you don't want to get trapped into. Mississippi State, Auburn, right now Auburn at home, favored by 10. 
Yeah, and don't overreact to Mississippi State getting crushed by Georgia. It was a horrible spot for them. They're off one of their biggest wins in years against LSU. It was a Mississippi State team that had covered their first three games by 91 points, and they just had a, a pathetic performance. I would like to look at the whole of their season, the first four games, then just overreact to a spot where, quite, flank, quite frankly, I like Georgia in that game. And while I was surprised that Mississippi State lost by four touchdowns, I'm not going to overreact to it as much as what the market has. So, Ken, specifically about that result, do you agree not to overreact? Oh, definitely. I mean, I was on Georgia like Brad, but it's a Mississippi State team. Like I said, they got ambushed. I expected Georgia to win, but I didn't expect it to be easy like that. And that first play, bang, bang, and then they stopped them three and out, and they just controlled the game in the first six, seven minutes. It was almost like a Tyson Spinks fight. Boom, 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 you're out, and that's it. All right, so like or lean in this game, Brad? Lean on Mississippi State. And not only are we seeing an overreaction for Mississippi State getting blown out, but Auburn finally woke up and put 50-some points on the board against a terrible Missouri team. So people are now starting to buy Auburn in their offense. Be careful of that overreaction. I think Missouri's got a lot of turmoil and issues. So slight lean on Mississippi State. Um, who has turmoil? Oh, you're saying? Missouri. Auburn oh, took advantage of a Missouri oh, okay. team with some turmoil last week. All right, so lean Mississippi State. Same question, Ken. Yeah, I'm on Mississippi State. I just think you can't give this. So on is in you I'm like. On. I'm playing him. I'm playing Mississippi State. Rubber band. I think Fitzgerald bounces back. I like this guy. He's you know he's a dual threat. He's got good solid running game with Aris Williams. And then Auburn, uh, they've gotten 12 sacks, but you know they're a team that's given up 16 sacks. Now a bunch of those were to Clemson, but when you look at Mississippi State, they protect Fitzgerald well. Only one time has he gone down this year. So seven sacks for them. I think you're going to see a lot of this game early on in the trenches. And if you see Mississippi State hold their own, which I expect, not only will they hold their own, I think they're going to put Stidham on his wallet several times. And I think if they do that, that they have an outside chance not to cover the 10, but to win outright against what I feel is a fraudulent Auburn team. So like Mississippi State from Ken Thompson, lean from Brad. Remember, we've got two games coming up at the end of the pod that are double likes. And then we got two best bets. So four games you can feel great about. By the way, part of those double likes, one of them is a smart money game. So it's the smart money, Brad Powers, Ken Thompson, all on one game coming up here before too long. That, by the way, the Auburn Mississippi State was our famous overreaction trap. Oh, wait, we just made that up. So it wasn't famous. Next game, trend game of the week, Florida, Vandy. Florida favored by 10. Brad, what's the trend? Well, trend is Florida series domination, second week in a row. Beaten Kentucky now 31 straight years. In this particular game against Vanderbilt, they've won 25 of the last 26 games straight up. So is it beaten or they beat Kentucky? They beat Kentucky? Uh, you said they I beat beaten? Kentucky. Now, you were a journalism major, yeah, right? You could, I like that you pounced on that. <laughs> and you, as you I hear, I've heard you say that, but yeah. it almost is like... Uh, like a type of affect. It's not, I don't think you're obviously it's not grammatically correct, but it, it feels like something I bet you grew up. Everyone was saying, Oh, they beaten them. Yeah. I think it's a little bit of, now where'd you grow up? What, what farm Ohio? area? Yeah. Farm area. In Ohio. <laughs> That's definitely farm, but you went to yeah. Bowling Green. Yeah. Right. Which isn't a great football program, but is a heck of a school. How much was that a year at Bowling Green? Uh, Why well, had a full scholarship? Well, so, saying beaten, did you go in yeah. and say beaten during the interview? No, I did not. Now, how much was it for the for the the kids that didn't have scholarship? It's like it was like even back before. I mean, it's like thirty k a year, isn't nah, it? No, I wasn't that. It's not maybe that. fifteen or so. That's a, a year. lot, though. Yeah. Now, could you've gotten into high <laughs> state if I wanted to? Yeah. You just didn't even apply. I was, I was valedictorian, RJ. Come on, I could have so went anywhere did, I wanted. But you, well, you could have went nah, to Harvard. You, but 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 did you apply to high state? I did not. You were scared of the big city. Yeah, I was big time. W- was that what it was? Yeah. I didn't want to live in RJ's so shadow. At so that wait, point. Oh, Columbus, <laughs> that point Columbus is the big city. Oh God. Well, it is a pretty, have you I, been to Columbus? I grew up in Jersey and New York. I mean, that there's cities there. <laughs> well, which, which city in Jersey is bigger than Columbus? I would mm, think. He's not. Well, I would think New York's got to be. You think New York's bigger than Columbus? I think Newark's a pretty, I, I would Well, you I would know something, so. the next time I, I, you're I, I ranting think... for three minutes, I'm going to look it up on my okay, phone. Okay, please. <laughs> All right. So it should be in a minute or so. <laughs> Speaking of that, Ken, Florida Vanderbilt, Florida's 10, lean or like? You know, I, this is a very slight lean to Florida just because I like 
Luke Del Rio, and I think this kid's a winner. Uh, like his dad, of course, the the head coach for the Raiders, although I don't base it off the Raider game in D.C. because uh, they got pummeled there. But I just like him, and I think he's the guy that is fit to run this offense. Uh, again, you're still missing your top two guys, and now it looks like the ball's really going to fall on all these players that are suspended because they're starting to get deep into this investigation with this credit card fraud. And I have a feeling Scarlett and Callaway and the rest of these guys are not going to be playing at all. They won't have to worry about it, which could take away – Somewhat of a distraction as well. For Vanderbilt, they come off getting beaten down in Nashville, 59 nothing. Bama traveled well, had half the crowd taken up, and the game was over. First quarter was already 21 nothing. Shermer, uh, Webb, and Blasting game, their three offensive guys couldn't get out of their own way, and Bama just pummeled them. And it was a humbling experience for Derek Mason and company. But Derek Mason, being the coach he is, probably went in there and said, guys, as far as we came with that start, 3-0, and here's where we are. That's the best team in the country year in, year out. We still have a ways to go. We'll be back on the practice field tomorrow. I like the way that Vandy's going as far as trending, but Florida's still the kingpin in the East uh, as far as the SEC. And even though, uh, you know, Vandy's on their way up, Florida's going to take care of business and probably win this game and probably cover it. So lean Florida. Yeah, slight lean. All right, so hopefully you're right about this, but boy, were you wrong. If you tripled Newark's population, it would still be less than Columbus. Newark. This is Google, 281,000 as of 2016, Columbus, 860,000. All right. There you go. Well, then I would say say the city is Las Vegas, right? You you know what's funny about Vegas because of the whole Henderson and North Vegas? it's not really Las Vegas itself? Yeah, sometimes you see weird numbers. I'll look it up uh, when Brad's talking. Um Let's talk about the Florida Vanderbilt, though, leaner like. Yeah, I like Florida. I also like Luke Del Rio, the quarterback. He gives him some stability at the position. He hasn't been healthy all through fall camp and the first couple of games of the season. Finally healthy, came in there, led a couple of fourth quarter touchdown drives. You could tell with a lot of inexperienced players relying on a guy who's a senior, a fifth year senior guy that's got a lot of playing experience, calm that offense down. And everyone talks about the suspended players. Well, that was three, four games ago. Now you got guys that actually have three, four games of game experience. So, so let's talk about that. Whatever the effect of an injury, whatever the effect of suspensions, over time, that effect dampens or diminishes because whoever, whatever the difference is, replacement players tend to do better over time. Absolutely, they do. So that initial downgrade, whatever you gave Florida, three, four points, now you start to trickle it a little bit back up as long as you're seeing production. And I'm starting to see it on the offensive side of the ball. Flip side, I don't know how Vanderbilt gets to pick themselves off the mat. I mean, that was as big of a beatdown as you'll see in college football this year. They got out game by 600 yards. And I think, did they think they could beat Alabama legitimately? No, but I think they thought they could have competed with Alabama. So it's not a dream crusher. They didn't have all these hopes, but I think they had hopes that, hey, we're making it. We're, we're close to getting this thing. And the reality is, we still got a long ways to go. Florida minus the points is my like. All right. So we got a lean and a like on Florida. By the way, see, Ken, Vegas says 632,000. So we might have to check, though not during the pod, the metropolitan areas. Because I know sometimes Vegas gets a number like 1.7 million mm-hmm. if you consider everything. So, all right. Next up. But Columbus is still Skyline. You ever have Skyline, Ken? Skyline Chile? Yeah, see. Skyline chill. Oh, no. Oh, next time you, you did. Were you a Skyline guy, Brad? No. What? So no. all your friends would go to Skyline. You'd be at home by yourself looking at Phil Steele magazines. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this, RJ. My, my dad was a Columbus guy. He loved Columbus out of all the places. He was, Bro- he was born in Brooklyn. But the one place he said, if he could spend his entire life would be Columbus. No, Island. I haven't lived in Columbus since 93. And I've been in Vegas since 99. But at the time, it was the best combination of big city, not the negatives of a big city, right? There was a bunch of restaurants and good movies and, you know, all the things big cities offer. Concerts, you know, Stones would come to town, right? I saw the Stones in 93, actually, at the Horseshoe. Is, But not the traffic, you know, not as much crime. You know, there's crime. So to me, it was a nice middle guy. Now, it's been a while, so... I'm not sure how that's evolved. I haven't even been there for like five years. I have, and I can say this. It's not saying much, but by far the best city in Ohio. I mean, there's such a different vibe and environment there. A lot of it's because of Ohio State. That city revolves around that campus. I, I like Columbus. I have oh, nothing for sure. For sure. Yeah, I, well, love, yeah, I mean, listen, good. the man that was afraid to go to yeah. Ohio State, the boy, yeah. 
this is the man that picked up and moved to Vegas. Yeah. So a lot of evolution from Brad Powers. <laughs> okay. Next game. We're going with our big line move game. So this is the one game amongst the big games in which the line moved the most. Kansas State, Baylor, and it went from Kansas State at home favored by 13 and a half to 17. A lot of movement towards Kansas State. Brad, there's a big trend in this game. There is. And, well, you know, not surprising, Bill Snyder, the head coach for Kansas State, has a great trend in his favor. How about this one? Those last 11 times he's had a regular season bye, coming off that bye, 11 and 0 against the spread. Very significant trend. You, and the thinking behind it, it's valid because, in my opinion, he's one of the top coaches in the history of college football. Doesn't get always priced that way, like a Saban or a Meyer. But when you give a, a great coach extra time to prep, and he's methodical, he's got work ethic. He, even in his late 70s, he's a guy that's working 80, 90 hours a week. Give him extra time, that's, uh, he extends his advantage over his opponents. Uh, I agree with you is my very best friend was on Kansas state's team 88 through 93 with a red shirt. And he actually was Stan Parrish was there the first year. That's a name from the past. Yeah. And then Bill Snyder came in and he actually was a GA there and stuff after. So he was with the program five or six years or six or seven years when Bill Snyder was young. Now he was at Iowa before and, uh, but he got that job when he was in his late forties, almost 50, he would work. It was a 90 hour thing. I mean, like he burnt, you know, Bob Stoops came out of there. Um, was, uh, that was his one, maybe his first coaching job, I think. And those guys still to this day, will talk about, and I know, you know, I know that tree a little bit. They will still talk about how hard Snyder worked now at his age. It's not how it was, but he's still probably out working 95% of the coaches. I agree with you for sure. All right, Ken. So Kansas State by 17, lean or like? Yeah, I'm going to lean towards Baylor. It's, it's just a lean, but, you know, Matt Rule's there. It's in, he's in his first year. They haven't won a game. Yes, they were embarrassed losing to Liberty. Uh, they got Terrence Williams back in the backfield. That gives them some senior leadership to go with Lovett, the freshman. So they've got a couple guys there that can run the ball. They've got the better athletes, believe it or not, skill position-wise. But Kansas State has the discipline, and they've got the brawn on the lines. And if Baylor's able to be disciplined, not commit turnovers, and they're down in that department, they only have one takeaway, and they've given the ball up six times. And Kansas State takes advantage of that. When you see K-State under Snyder play in in the Little Apple in Manhattan, very rarely do they commit penalties. So if Baylor cuts down on the penalties, and they've done that under Matt Rule, and they stay focused, 17's a lot of points to give this team. They had Oklahoma on the ropes after looking like they were going to get blown out at home, came back and had it put a scare into Oklahoma, and the Sooners were, you know, had to go on a late run and got bailed out by the freshman running back Sermon to uh, get over the top there in Waco. So I think Baylor's got some confidence after playing Oklahoma as well as they did in the second half. Looking at that Snyder tree, by the way, I, I just looked it up on Twitter. So Bob Stoops, Jim Lavitt from South Florida, right? We, mm-hmm. we were talking about. He's the defense coordinator, coordinator of Oregon. Oregon right? Yeah, yeah. But when he he was at he was South aw- Florida. And he was awesome. He got, and you were he talking about down. they were two in the country at one point, I remember. In 2007, he got him the number two in the country. Uh, Mangino got Kansas to the Orange Bowl. Yep. How was that that game? Uh, won the Orange Bowl. Yeah, I mean, Mangino was really the only guy that ever turned that program around for Kansas. And, well, for sure, yeah, look at it now. Uh, Mike Stoops, right, was at Arizona, wasn't super successful. And then uh, Bielema yep. under that tree. And coordinators-wise, Venerable was at OU, Latina at Notre Dame, John Latina, Phil Bennett at Pitt, and Dana Dimmel at Arizona. So, But the funny thing is, Mangino Levitt and Mike Stoops, probably three of the hardest core coaches when it comes to, you know, you can say it's gray, you know, grabbing kids or whatever back in the day. And both Mangino and Levitt got, you know, dismissed mm-hmm. yep. due to that. And they all kind of thought Snyder was too hardcore. So <laughs> there you go with that one. All right. Thoughts on the game. Uh, I'm leaning Baylor. Uh, the reason it's not a like is I don't like to go up against uh, Mr. Snyder too much, especially with such a historical trend there, 11 0. But uh, here's where the market's mispricing Baylor. They're still treating them like the team that lost to Liberty. Well, this team has made market. I've been much improved each and every game so far this season, even had a respectable 14 point loss against Duke two weeks ago. That looks better and better by each week. And we're leading Oklahoma outright in that game last week. So market hasn't quite adjusted to them getting a bunch of starters back from from injury. 
I'll play against the line move. I, I wouldn't have, it had been a pass at 14, but at 17, give me Baylor. As and, a they, and they did make the quarterback switch to Zach Smith from a new Solomon. So, you know, evidently it paid off. Great stuff from the boys. That was Ken Thompson with the comment at the end. Brad Powers with the trend on Snyder. I'm RJ Bell. We're hitting the home stretch here with the dream preview with podcast one, Adam Carolla's family of pods. By the way, I do 20 minutes or so with Adam Carolla every week on Wednesday. So his Wednesday show, check out Adam Carolla and, you know, the most listened to podcaster in the world. 800,000 listens a day, if you can believe it, from Adam is the average. He's in the Guinness Book of Records and 20 minutes. And we know, we, we talk about three minutes of, of, of Vegas stuff and then 17 minutes of politics or, you know, race relations. <laughs> It's dangerous. I could, I, I could blow up from Adam, you know, where it's great success, or I could be run out of town <laughs> based on <laughs> what Adam <laughs> baits me into. So hopefully we can avoid that. But we're hitting the home stretch here. We've got pros versus Joes. We got smart money games, double likes, best bets, crossfires. I mean, talk about a lineup to finish things off here with fire and fury. Now, looking at the pros versus Joes, Okie State. Texas Tech, right now, Okie State is 10. We've got the the Joes betting Okie State, as you could expect, even off the loss, the pros on Tech. Brad, where are you going? I'm actually on neither side here. I'm passing with this one. And here's where, where I come into it. Uh, series history has been dominated by Oklahoma State. They run a very similar style of offense at Texas Tech, so they're used to seeing it. No adjustment there. And Oklahoma State tends to have the better athletes than Texas Tech. So they're very familiar with the system. And they're just better at running at it. But here's where I am kind of want to make a case for Texas Tech. I have thought Oklahoma State's been overrated. The Pittsburgh game was such an outlier for me, a, a, such a kick to my stomach because I like Pittsburgh that I had to, you know, kind of, you know, consider and be on the public side last week of the TCU game. Well, Oklahoma State tended to be the team that I thought they were a couple weeks before. So I'm wishy-washy on Oklahoma State and where they're going to be. That's why I got to pass in two, this one. Two reasons to pass a game. And it's not lack of interest, right? Any pro, that if they'll take a bet on it, Brad's fine. He's going to be happy to bet it if he likes it. Two reasons to pass. One is you think the line's right, right? So it's that easy. Or no, And listen, guys, all these leans, they think the line's right, too. It's just a half a point one way, and they're giving you their lean. On the likes, it might be a point, point and a half or more if you're betting it, right? Usually a bet based upon key numbers is going to be a point and a half or two points or a little bit more, not more than that hardly ever, you know, a couple of times a year, you might think so. All right. So it's, or the second reason other than the line being right is you're uncertain. That's important to remember the big edge you have over the bookmaker. You can bet any game you want, whenever you want for how much you want, you know, up to the limit. Don't for, if you're playing every game or forcing TV games, you have no chance. Ken, like or lean, Okie State, Texas Tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking Texas Tech, and it's based on what I saw last week. Now, I know they gave up a lot of yardage to Houston, but they were in control of that game, a road game. Normally, they go on the road against a high-powered offense, and they struggle mightily defensively. They'll win a shootout occasionally. They won a shootout at home the week before against Arizona State. And Kingsbury, although being he's coaching his alma mater, he's still under pressure to win games right now. And so he needs to take advantage of this Okie State team. I'm not saying that he wins this game, but I'm saying that it's going to be a one-score game. I think he keeps this game within seven. Found a good running game in Stockton and King. The two guys combined 19 carries, 200 yards last week on the road. That was huge. Is Kiki QT, an outstanding receiver. He He's like similar to somebody that you would find on Oklahoma State, a guy like James Washington or Marcel Aitman or uh, McCleskey, those three receivers that Mason Rudolph has at his disposal. So, again, it's a, it's a play that I think Okie State may bounce back and get a road win, but I don't think they should be double-digit favorites at all on the road, especially after getting beat down and exposed the way Texas uh, Christian exposed them last week in Stillwater. Good stuff from Ken Thompson there. All right, smart money. Now, listen. On Twitter, there's a lot of people talking, a lot of, as Mr. T would say, jibber-jabber. I like that. <laughs> Mr. T, yeah. hey, don't give me that jibber-jabber. Yeah. And, hey, it is what it is. We're getting our smart money from Matt Holt, who is the vice president at the biggest bookmaker in Nevada. 
CG Technology. Late breaking email straight from him on Tuesday. And we'll tell you every week right here on the Dream Preview which of the bigger games has the smart money. And by the way, Matty Holt is in studio every week for the NFL Dream Preview. What feedback? I got to be honest, guys. We're getting amazing feedback here. Dream Preview, NFL, amazing too. It's a battle. It's like <laughs> a battle of two A students. Who was the student who was your challenge for Valor Victorian? Uh, his name was Jake Hoflick. Where's he at now? Uh, you wish know. him ill? No, not at all. Oh, I bet you guys had a real comp. When I was Jake a nerd or was he an no, athlete? Athlete, one of the best athletes uh, in our school. You, oh, I bet you were complaining to your friends like the teachers were giving preferential Talking treatment. Talking about Jake, that new president at Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. What? New president at Amazon? Yeah. Instead of Is, Bezos? Wasn't that it? The guy, his, his what name? was his name? Yeah, no, he's not president of Amazon. Come on, I <laughs> oh, No, but I didn't know yeah. Amazon had a new president. No, no they don't. Oh, yeah. oh, oh come so on, you were just making stuff out. Yeah. I'm just. Oh, come that on, was man. so witty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. So, but you had to not like Jake, right? I didn't like a lot of people at my school, but you didn't like Jake. Just be honest. There's just well, there's just gonna... thirty thousand or so people. Listening. Yeah, I I didn't like a lot of people. So let's just put it. What that was way. Jake's social security number? <laughs> All right, now, he's he's been he's been buying your plays the last yeah. several years. Just so you know, <laughs> I could see Brad drinking Bush Light, saying that yeah. mofo. He shouldn't have gotten an A on that one. True wow. or false? Just be honest. Yeah, there was some issues. <laughs> we, won't, we won't go into it. It's for another you, podcast. How did I know that? Yeah. How did I know? Well, that? Well, you know me. You know I got an extra grind. Wow. <laughs> well, see, that's why you work so hard, though, and that's why we love it. So anyway. Smart money, <laughs> smart money game here. Clemson, Virginia Tech, and it's on Virginia Tech, the smart money. Brad, you think something deceiving about Clemson's scoreboard last game? Yeah, I expected a flat performance from Clemson because they're coming off of Auburn and the Louisville games. They have this game that we're going to talk about on Virginia Tech on deck, but not flat enough where it's 7-7 entering the fourth quarter against an overrated Boston College team. They go on to win the game 34-7, so they go on a 27-0 run to finish the game, make it very misleading, you know, come within a touchdown or covering the spread. I think that creates a little bit of value here on the Hokies, the home dog. Okay, so you, oh, look, you happen to agree with the smart money. Now, is this a lean or a like? This is only a lean because, you know, Clemson, look, we've talked about it on several podcasts. We talked about it before the season with, on Colin Coward's podcast. There's no better big game coach right now than Dabo Sweeney. And last I checked, this is a big game. And he, so Clemson on the road, favored by seven, seven and a half in different spots against Virginia Tech. Yeah, and here's where I think it's a little pricey. I know they went on the road, were favored by three against Louisville and crushed them a couple weeks ago. But Virginia Tech has a much, much better defense than Louisville. And there it is. And so that's why I'm leaning. Well, not leaning. I played Virginia Tech and I took seven and a half points. I think that hook is key. It's in Blacksburg. You talk about an atmosphere for a game. And Bud Foster's still there. Let's remember, Beamer Ball might not be there. But they replaced him with one of the best young coaches in the game, and Justin Fuente. This guy can flat-out coach, did a bang-up job there at Memphis, and he laid the groundwork there, and he left a, a cupboard full back there in Memphis. So he didn't just bury the program and move on to greener pastures. And so he's got players there at Va Tech. Yes, they're going to get the recruits, especially around the state of Virginia, more so than anybody else. But Josh Jackson, he's a gamer, a solid quarterback, 11 touchdowns, just one pick on the season. And they've got a stable of running backs. McMillan's outstanding. And Cam Phillips, one of the better receivers on the East Coast. Uh, Clemson, again, Kelly Bryant, the jury's still out on this guy. He's a dual-threat quarterback. I like the way the guy mixes things up. He still has Hunter Renfro. He's got McLeod. He's got Kane. Good receivers. The defense was dominant against Auburn. So when you look, you say, wow, this team has 17 sacks already. They had 11 against Auburn. But they've given up 10 sacks, too. And that makes me worry about that Clemson offensive line that's been so dominant in years past. And Virginia Tech, what do they do? They win games in the trenches, especially in Blacksburg. I think they put pressure all over Bryant. I think they force some turnovers. They're the best at special teams year in, year out. They were with Beamer, and Fuente's grabbing that torch right now. I think Virginia Tech not only hangs in this game, they have an outstanding opportunity to win this ball game straight up. Ken Thompson likes Virginia Tech. Brad Powers leans Virginia Tech, smart money Virginia Tech. That sounds good, right? Well, it's not this good. We've got smart money number two, which is on UCLA. And oh, by the way, this is a double like, both Ken and Brad. So we got smart money and a double like. UCLA 
minus seven. Lines moved on this baby against Colorado. I like UCLA. And first, let me admit to we had a crossfire on the Friday national show, you and I, on a Colorado-Washington game. And I'll wave the white flag. RJ got more than the best of me in that one. Colorado was exposed last week. Here's a team didn't play anyone in the non-conference, played three teams outside the top 50 of a power rating. Once they went up against a good team, got crushed at home, and that was a good situational spot for them. By 27 at home against Washington, I think UCLA on the flip side is in desperation mode. They lost the last couple of weeks. I got more firepower on offense. A desperate team needs to win over an, uh, I, what I think is an exposed and overrated Colorado team. I like the Bruins in here minus the points. Okay, so let's talk about the Fox show. So Fox National Radio, 330 stations coast to coast, Sirius 83, iHeartRadio app, the whole, the full Monty, as they say, 11 to 12 Pacific on Friday. So two to three Eastern for the bars letting out for you guys, let's be honest. And then on Saturday, we need an extra hour. So it's 10 to midnight Pacific, one to three. And then we put the podcast out on Twitter at RJ in Vegas. And what we've been doing a good job of, I think, is taking on Saturday that college review we review every recap maybe the better way to say it and putting that out as a pod on monday morning and getting thousands of listens there too so great stuff i think on the fox sports radio nationally all right ken so you also like ucla yeah i do and i wouldn't say that uh colorado was exposed as badly as you're you're making it sure the final score was bad but they were in that game. In fact, they were leading that game first half. And then you turn the ball over. You can't do that against the Washington team. Peterson's teams always capitalize. And Montez was maybe exposed as being an erratic passer. And that's what he is. He's somebody that tries to mix it up. But his problem is he tries to force the ball. And he's not as accurate as Josh Rosen. Rosen also tries to force the ball. But Rosen's forces are much closer to his target than uh, Steven Montez. And therefore, with Rosen, over 1,750 yards, 16 touchdowns, 4 picks on the year so a four to one ratio there look he's played against some tough teams so far uh the you know the early game against a&m he got that one the memphis game was a good test for him and memphis came away victorious but again he showed flashes of brilliance there he showed the way he can lead a comeback against a&m the hawaii game was a little deceiving i know they gave up a lot of yardage but i'm looking for rosen to have a nice home field game Yes, Colorado still licking their wounds coming off that home loss in a game that was a cha- uh, championship rematch of the Pac-12 last year, a game that they had circled. And because they fell flat on their face in the third and fourth quarter at home in Boulder, they're going to be a little bit flat. And by the time they wake up, UCLA is going to be up double digits. I think the Bruins win this game by 17 plus. All right. So that's Ken Thompson. Brad Powers also liking it. And the smart money. We got best bets coming up and crossfire. First, though. Listen, guys, I've run a business for a long time, and I never know what's going to work. I know what I like, but oftentimes what I like and what you like are different. Well, we've been putting out a coupon for the premium stuff from Ken, from Brad, and the response has been, I mean, like double what I expected. So because of that, I'm going to put a little challenge out there for you guys. So what we've been doing is giving $10 off any premium pick you want which is half price or so on, on some of these and even le- even more of a percentage off on the lesser price packages and such. Okay. Because you've done so wonderfully responding and really affirming us, right? We spend a lot of time money on this. You're telling us you love it, both through the listenership and responding saying, Hey, if this is Brad's not very, this is his opinion on the big games. I want his very best stuff. Ken too makes a ton of sense. So I'm going to go up a dollar to 11 off this week. Spinal tap. But here, it, we're turning it to 11, <laughs> baby. But here's the challenge. Every week that more people use this coupon than the week before, I'm going up a dollar. And I'll stop at 30 because no, nothing's more than 30. But every week, if it goes up, next week will be 12. And if you disappoint me, if you fall short, well... There'll be a consequence. Let's just say it like that. So here's the coupon. CFB Dream 11. So CFB, D-R-E-A-M, 11, all caps, and the 11 is 1-1. CFB Dream 11. Anything you want that expires Saturday, though, you can use it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, expire Saturday, any college football package from Brad, from Ken, or other people. But obviously, you guys like Brad and Ken. Because you're listening. All right. It's best bet time. 
you know, I'm going to start with Ken on this. Ken, give us your best bet of the week. All right, I'll make my wife a little bit uh, angry there. She's a Madison gal, loves her Wisconsin Badgers, and I don't think they're going to lose this game per se, but I think it's going to be a very close game. Pat Fitzgerald is a solid coach. Look, the Duke team's better than we thought, and Northwestern got ambushed down there in Durham and got beat pretty good. But at the beginning of the year, when I looked at the Western half of the Big Ten, there were two teams that I said are going to battle and they were going to be Northwestern and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's always seems to be there because they always seem to have one of the top three offensive lines in football. This year is no different. You saw the way they dominated both sides of the trenches in Provo. And again, a BYU team that had to go with a third-string quarterback, uh, Merrill Hodges' kid, Bo Hodge, went at it, but they really didn't let him throw the ball. But Wisconsin, when they protect Hornybrook like they did to where he's not even touched and he's wearing white pants and he leaves the field at the end of the game and his pants are still nice and white, you know that they're dominating the trenches. And this running game is very solid. They found a young kid in uh, Jonathan Taylor that's picking up the pieces there. Uh, But Clayton Thorson, he's a gamer. He's a dual threat for Northwestern, and they've got one of the better running backs in the country in Justin Jackson. I think they're going to mix it up enough. Fitzgerald's going to have them fired up. They know this isn't just a game. They're going in there expecting to win this game because this is a senior-laden club that expects to win the western half of the Big Ten. So they don't give a crap about 17 points. They care about winning this ball game. I care about taking the points, and it's not 17. I got 15 and a half is what it went up to today here in Vegas because a lot of money's still coming in on Wisconsin. Remember the first couple games for Wisconsin, a little bit flat, Florida Atlantic, Utah State. They went out west again against a BYU team that's physical but has no offense whatsoever. That was evident in the LSU game prior at the Superdome. So I think this is going to be a game inside 10 points. I think Northwestern probably hangs within one score and maybe has a chance to win it. But somehow the senior-laden club and that big offensive line of Wisconsin gets it done. But again, this game's inside 10 points, RJ. Northwestern best bat plus 15 and a half. Now listen, I always say this is I – came up, I cut my teeth on the USA Network's Saturday morning shows, right? And Mike Warren, I remember the professor, Ed Horowitz. I've heard some stories about the professor. Let's just say that. And I I guess I'm not sure if he's still alive. Do you sell your house, your kids, your wife? Sell your house, (laughs) sell your car, sell your kids and bet this game, right? No, you the best guy though. And you you probably remember who, and I can't remember his name, but he'd be like, you know, the guys in Vegas, they always win. I don't win. So he'd tell you how he liked this team, and then he'd go and grab the uh, the other team. He'd go, well, I, I love Army. I don't think I he was too successful, was he? Uh, no, well, no, he'd grab the other team. Like, he'd do his handicapping and go, well, if every week that I lose and I owe my bookie every week, so this year I'm starting over, that I'm going to break it down like I always do, but then I'm going to grab the other team. He goes, I love Notre Dame over Navy. You mean Navy plus the 12. That's how he did it. was just <laughs> It was great, man. It was just well, funny. And I don't know how he did, but it was <laughs> You know what's funny, though, if you think about it, it's like there's certain skill sets to convince people. And obviously, pregame's doing things entirely differently, right? We're about, uh, you heard a 40-second pitch on go buy some picks, and otherwise it's pure content. Because what we found, in, and I feel so encouraged by the reality of this, is if you provide great content, people want to get involved. Maybe it's buying one pick a month or, or one pick a week, just using the coupon, understanding they're getting great value. You're getting four, you know, all of Brad's best stuff for the whole month for like, you know, in college for like 40 bucks or Ken's cause you're using your coupon. Fine. Well, except if I take the coupon away because you guys don't <laughs> ramp it up, but we'll see about that. But to me, the internet's proven quality can rise to the top. And you guys, in my opinion is high quality college football as it gets. But that said, there was salesmanship back in the day. Mm-hmm. Look at a guy like Wayne Root, right? He was one of Jim Feist's biggest sellers. Uh, I wasn't even, you know, I moved to Vegas in 99, and that that business was dying at that point, and I never had any dealings with them, any of them, really. I know Wayne and uh, Spritzer used to be with them, and I know Scott. But, you know, that old school, they were the boiler rooms, right? Outbound calls, Hey, rush down and get your mom's credit card and give us 10,000. I mean, it was some tough stuff, right? And, you know, pregame's never done a single outbound call ever. And another thing is everyone should pay the same price, right? So at pregame, you go and there's a price, right? You might have a coupon, you might have a discount, but there's a price. What those guys were master at is understanding how much someone could pay 
they'd get 10,000 bucks. Now, what was dastardly about those guys is when they would lose, they'd say, oh, well, you weren't, you only paid us 500 bucks. You weren't really getting the good picks. <laughs> so now it's like, well, I'm in a hole. I'm going to avoid the bookie for a week and then somehow put 2000 bucks on my credit card and hope to win. And like the old rain maker thing is occasionally it's going to rain, right? Sometimes they're going to win, even if they're flipping a coin. I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but I think you can kind of guess what I'm saying. But you look at someone like Root, he was the vice presidential nominee for the Libertarian Party. He got almost a half a million votes for president. So think about this. And now he's on Fox News. And again, you might be right. You might be left. I'm not even talking about that. I'm saying the same skill set that allowed him to sell on Feist and eventually for himself was the skill set that's allowed him to be a big political figure with their radio show that's syndicated. Now, that may be a sign of how great communication skills uh, and salesmanship can succeed in life. It could be a sign, in your opinion, I'm not saying it's mine, that, oh, scammers can scam when it comes to politics or when it comes to selling picks or when it comes to, let's say, a lot of people would look at certain preachers or religious figures and say, oh, there are salesmen. So it's fascinating how the world of politics in this case and touts overlap the half a million <laughs> votes for vice president. I didn't even know that. You're like breaking news to me now. They're pretty amazing. Wow. All right. Speaking of that, speaking of hucksters, Ken Thompson. Oh, wait, no, no, not Ken. You can follow him on Twitter and he has his own radio show, 50,000 watts at night. Only a few of those in the country here in Vegas on Kadon. But for all news about Ken's show, and listen, Ken's a unique guy. I mean, he's almost like those, you ever see those uh, Russian dolls where you uh, open up one and there's another one yeah. inside? When Ken does his breakdown, you think, okay, that makes sense. Then he goes another level and it's like, huh, okay. Then he goes like three more levels. It's like, seriously? But it's so unique. And 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 I think when mitigated with other stuff is, is there's just so much. you got to concentrate when you listen to Ken. So much depth and knowledge. You can follow him on Twitter, Sports X Radio, and get his very best picks at pregame.com exclusively. Brad Powers, best bet. I'm going with Minnesota, a team coming off a bye, minus the points against Maryland. I was on Maryland with a premium pick uh, last week and lost that game. Didn't lose early, lost because of a quarterback injury. Maryland's up on the game, looking good. Quarterback goes down. So what does that mean for this week? Well, Maryland was already down to their second string quarterback. He was a talented guy, a true freshman uh, that I thought actually had more upside than their starter coming into the season. The problem is that at school like Maryland, it's not Ohio State. It's not Alabama. They don't have a third string quarterback. And the guy that came into last week's game was abysmal. They end up losing the game 38 to 10. I don't think the marketplace is downgraded Minnesota or Maryland enough going from the second string to the third string quarterback. On the flip side, I love the situation with Minnesota. P.J. Flex, their new head coach, there's already buying of the program. He's a very motivational guy. Well, you need immediate success. They've gotten it. They've won their first three games, and they're coming off a bye. They're the more physical team. Maryland's beat up from playing UCF last week. Down to a third-string quarterback. Market's not uh, appropriately pricing that downgrade from second string to third string. That's why I like the Gophers minus the points as a best bet. Best bet, Brad Powers. Now, we've got our bonus crossfire coming up. It's going to be a fast, blistering two or three minutes. First, though, if you want Brad's other stuff, more stuff, videos, all of it, radio shows, at Brad Powers 7. Brad Powers, the number 7 on Twitter for Brad and pregame.com. Everything is up there in the forums. Okay, guys, Friday night bonus special last game. We've got USC. We got Washington State. It is a crossfire. The boys disagree. They like opposite sides. I want short, Ken, Ken, I want short presentation, short, and then I want crosstalk. Ken, start it off. All right. Uh, USC, I think, is being downgraded because of their close game with Cal and because of the close game with Texas, and rightly so. Uh, again, I said I thought SC was overrated as far as maybe winning the whole thing or being a playoff team, but they're still good enough to beat a Washington State team that's missing their linebacker that runs everything on defense, Peyton Pilar. That's a major loss for Wazoo. So that's kind of like the quarterback of the defense. Exactly. This guy is by far their best defensive player. Uh, they have another guy, Hercules, 
uh, Mata'afa is very good on the defensive line, but this guy is. He a just said caller. Hercules Mata'afa without looking at notes. Yeah. <laughs> Wowza. So you guy. like USC? I do like USC. And what's the current line? Current line is three and a half. USC favorite. All right, so hang on. Brad, your first presentation. Boy, that sounds awfully cheap. USC minus three and a half. I wonder why. And I think the early money <laughs> I hear going sarcasm. against it. Well, this is the biggest game, arguably, in Pullman in 10 years, 20 years, maybe ever. You got a Washington State team that's already off to a 4-0 start and playing with a lot of confidence. Now, they haven't played the particular competition that USC has played so far, but I'm going to use Ken's words against them. He just said he thinks they're overrated, and, and you broke that down eloquently. Overrated as far as winning the title. I think they're overrated. If you got your plus four turnovers against Cal and can only manage a 10-point victory against Cal, what do you think they're going to do if they're faced with similar you know, expectations as far as this game? They're going to get beat by 10 points. Now, I don't have to get beat by 10 points to cash this ticket. All I got to do is come within three. So give me Washington State plus the points. I've already taken off the rubber band and played them plus five and a half. I would play him again plus four and a half, and I play him at this current line of plus three and a half. I think Washington State wins this game outright. And here, here's why. Here's why. If you look at their four and zero start, they played Boise State at home. They were losing this game thirty one to ten. Boise State moronically throws the ball from their own fifteen yard line, a pick six. If they run the ball, if they just ran the ball, their three possessions in that fourth quarter, they win that game. They end up losing it in double overtime. Falk, your great quarterback, gets benched, <laughs> gets freaking pulled and benched. Holinsky comes in and bails your ass out. Now you're going against the speed of the L.A. kids? Are you kidding me? First off, uh, you, you not only do they have Burnett 100%, but Stephen Carr gets Ronald Jones back. Ronald Jones will be running. So you have the two tandem. Ronald Jones did not play at Cal. All right. When you go against a freshman car, just the one running back, that's different. Ronald Jones is the senior laden guy. Now you got both guys there. SC's got too much speed. Yes, they're missing Gustin. They're missing a, a good, solid defensive player. But the rest of the guys are there intact. There's a major speed differential. And Boise State had more speed than Wazoo. You don't have River Craycraft. You don't have these other guys uh, from last year, the receiving core. The receiving core is a total downgrade this year for Falk. He doesn't have those guys, and he doesn't have the greatest offensive line. It's a good offensive line, but not one that's going to keep out corner blitzes. USC is going to roll in that game. They're going to start out slowly, but they're going to roll because there's a major speed differential. And, yes, Pullman will be partying. and they'll be. If it was Halloween, I'd be a little more leery. Because crazy stuff happens in Pullman. And, and, and you know what? It's a standalone game at that time. It's a 730 kickoff. But by 930, Wazoo will be down double digits. And SC won't be throwing the ball from their own 10. That's Ken Thompson with SC. Last word, Brad Powers. Well, it's short travel week for USC. And he says, well, if Boise State would, would have ran the football instead of threw it and they wouldn't have had a pick six. Well, same if, Boise State, though, RJ, they lost by 30 yeah. to Virginia at home. Well, okay? if Texas goes for two points instead of kicks the extra point in overtime, USC loses that game. If California doesn't have six turnovers, maybe they only have five. They make a chip <laughs> shot field goal. This would be, a, you know, a one in a two and one, two USC unimpressive team. I'm glad that we're up against it. I look forward to the game on Friday night and maybe a little bit of a friendly bet. Come down us. the Golden Nugget. I'll be doing my show there. Come All down right. there. Boy, Sounds you can get an extra plug in. Yeah, you believe yeah. that? I love it, man. <laughs> Tony Miller better buy and give <laughs> yeah. me a comp. Yeah. There you go. Tony <laughs> Miller, Golden Nugget. All right, guys, you can follow me on Twitter, at RJ in Vegas. Remember, Dream Pod NFL Edition comes out every Thursday morning, this baby, every Wednesday morning, crack at dawn. Talk to you then. Thanks for listening to R.J. Bell's Dream Preview. Catch the Wise Guy Roundtable each week. College football released on Wednesday. NFL on Thursday. Don't miss any winners. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Visit podcastone.com and download the Podcast One app. Have a question for R.J.? You can contact him directly on Twitter at R.J. in Vegas. Live the dream with us each week. Podcast One Sports presents Attack Each Day, the Harbaugh's podcast. Every Tuesday, you can hear Jack Harbaugh. We're going to attack this day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Jim Harbaugh. What the hell's going on around here? And JT Rogan share their stories from on and off the field. Past guests include John Harbaugh, ESPN's Adam Schefter, and Pardon My Takes, PFT, and Big Cat. So don't miss an episode of Attack Each Day, the Harbaugh's podcast. Every Tuesday, exclusive exclusively on podcast1.com and the new podcast 1 app just a sample of what's coming to podcast 1 sports 
Oh, brother. The reason it's called the NFL, not for long. It's sports related with Jordan and Luke Rogers. The Chargers football is not going to work in Los Angeles. I got hit by a car on my scooter eight days before our first game of my senior year. I was out there playing. No rib strain's going to keep me out. JoJo, what is the last book that Jordan read? I think he just likes to read Twitter articles. Download new episodes of Sports Related every Friday on the Podcast One app, Apple Podcasts, or PodcastOne.com. There are so many ways to save at your friendly neighborhood Safeway. And now, save even more with over 7,000 lower prices on the things you buy most. Save today on Chiquita Bananas. They're just 49 cents a pound. Selected varieties of 32-ounce Lucerne Chunk or Shredded Cheese are $6.99. And use your club card to get a value pack of Signature Farms Chicken Drumsticks, Thighs, or Leg Quarters. They're only $1.29 a pound. Safeway. Come in and explore. 